And while we were returning from the Barber Vintage Festival in 2019, my rear tire, pusher tire, went flat. And it went flat fast. You can see there I was riding along. I, I cut the video in for my son's helmet camera. And as I went over, over those rumble strips, that was it. The, the tire was just flat. And here I, I didn't want to push it any further trying to ride it. I was trying to ride and turn into that driveway, but as flat as I knew this tire was, I didn't want to risk spinning the rim in the tire, cutting the tire, or damaging the rim. So I took a quick look and then I just pushed it on over into the driveway. Now, of course, being a Ural, I carry a spare and I'm prepared for such an eventuality. And the one thing that I didn't bring with me this time was the scissor jack because I know that I can get the bike up on the center stand by itself. That, that was my reasoning. But I had never actually tried to do it with the rear tire flat. So it actually took both of us to do it. Uh, a few still pictures here during the change, but I've got a, a video section that I shot while I was there coming up. Uh, the rotor was surprisingly hot for a while, so I just left it on the old tire till I got the new one on and then moved it over. It wasn't that difficult. Of course, I had to remove my muffler and everything went back together just fine. It really wasn't that big of a deal. And we used the hammer as a chock so we could lift the rear end and roll the tire in. Well, if you'd asked me before today if I'd ever had to have changed a spare on the road, I would have answered no. Now I have to answer yes. My rear tire, <laughs> no idea, I don't see any damage, so I had to open her up and get in there and see what happened, but I said, something don't feel, and that was it. She was flat. I mean, it went flat fast. But uh, fortunately, we, we're here at a roundabout at 54 and 16. We're not far from home, but had this nice driveway here. I broke out the toolkit, took a few pictures I'll show you, but I uh, did everything with what you see here in the, in the rollout toolkit. I am going to be making some changes to my toolkit based on this. Uh, one of the major changes, I, I, I guess it's just the dynamics of how it's sitting or all, but I, I'm definitely going to start carrying a scissor jack or a bottle jack. That's, that's first on my mission. You know, I have a scissor jack. I can get it up on the center stand without it. But, you know, w what didn't dawn on me is getting it on the center stand when the rear tire ha is full of air is a lot different than getting it on the center stand when that rear tire is flat. And I'll be honest, I did not account for that. Thankfully, my son's riding with me. He's parked over there. And uh, the two of us, we got it up on the center stand. But with that rear tire being flat, there is no way I would have got it on the center stand. So lesson learned, thankfully no problems. One thing I did have to do, I do carry leather gloves. So that let me handle the brake rotor, even though it was still rather warm. Uh, it's cooled off now. And for mine, I have to take the muffler off because this is a retro. I had to take the muffler off to get the the tire out with a rotor on it but uh, uh it, that's fine and i have my cooler with me so i poured water on the muffler to cool it down a little bit more and then i was able to handle it with leather gloves so all in all not a bad experience i'll be curious to see if this is a, a spoke nipple or a rip tube or you know maybe i missed a nail or something that that i hit i you know didn't look at this tire too close but uh, something happened and it just went flat fast. We're about ready to hit the road again and head on. This is all part of the adventure, right? Okay, so I got home. I really wanted to see why the tire went flat. Uh, I was halfway expecting maybe something with the valve stem. Uh, I'd already seen I couldn't find a nail or anything in the tire. So I, I was really puzzled as to what might be going on. Here's the, the wheel. I want you to notice this rim strip, okay? This is a, I think it's inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter rim strip. I generally use one inch rim strips. When I went with a new provider, I, I didn't think anything about it. It's the tubes and strips that he uses. So um, put them on. And you'll notice, 
and, and in the camera, I don't know how I can show you this, but when I run my finger from the aluminum down, there's, there's an edge there. And you can actually see, I haven't cleaned anything, you can see what looks like rubber in here. You can see it here, uh, especially right here. This rim strip is pushed more to that direction. Try to get you in the camera there. And there's a pronounced edge right here. And you can see little rubber shavings. Now this tire had 3,500 miles on it. It had never been run flat. Uh, everything was going good, but you can see this edge here. Now, back to the tube. Uh, I was going to do kind of a, a review about ride-on, the stuff that you add about preventing flats. I understand it has to be in the tread section, but I blew this tube back up. It does have ride-on in it, and you can see this is the ride-on coming out of the gap here, and you can see there's another one over here. And if it's hard to tell when it's deflated, I'll see if I can blow it up here in a second, but you can see it here. See this line right here? This line pretty much goes all the way around the inside of this tube and it was cut right here. There, there's actually a, a long cut here. And when I put this back on, you can see the valve stems here valve stems there. When I put this back on, I end up right in this area up here, okay? And when I put the inner tube back over the wheel and blew it up, these cut marks matched the edges of this rim strip. So I'm, I'm fairly convinced that the, the rim strip is what did this. Uh, if I turn it over, the opposite side um, that didn't get cut, you can see there's, there's a cut starting there too. And you can follow that all the way around. So what happened uh, was it just took its time cutting it, wearing the rubber against the rubber until that was it, it went. So what am I gonna do to address this? First, I'm gonna go back to one inch rim strips. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get uh, away from the ones that are wider than this valley. And I'm gonna go back with the one inch. So I'm gonna go back with the narrower rim strips. Second thing I'm gonna do is I used to run heavy duty tubes in the 2008 and the 2010. And on these, I just for whatever reason did not run the heavy duty tubes. So this is, I don't wanna say it's thin. I mean, you can see there that's two layers of it, but it is much, much thinner than what I'm used to running. So let me grab the heavy duty tubes I'm gonna be going back to. Okay, so I was running IRC tubes before. I'm gonna go back to the IRC heavy duty um, tube. They are significantly heavy, heavy duty here. You can see the, the size is three and a half slash 410. Uh, they're 18 inch. Um, they're in another unit of measure, 120 slash 80, 18. And the one that I actually selected on was 100 slash 118. So you can already see, if, if I pinch this as hard as I can, this tube is much thicker than the thin one that we had here. Now, running thick tubes. I was told by a few people, you shouldn't run thick tubes on the highway. They cause excess heat to build up and they'll cause more problems, they'll come apart and they'll blow. Well, I put 20,000 miles on six IRC tubes on my 2008 Tourist. And when I swap tires, I tend to swap tubes anyway because I just see them as cheap enough. It's, it's not worth the uh, potential of damaging one. And yeah, I tend to just go back with a new tube, but I understand reusing them if, if you want to reuse, especially the heavy duty ones. There's no way I'd reuse this. This I actually might. So, you know, I got 20,000 miles out of them and never had a problem. And when I would take them down and take them apart and, and mount new tires, I never saw an issue with these heavy duty tubes. I never saw any separation. I just never saw an issue with them. So I'm going back with the heavy duty. 
Story's always subject to change. Meanwhile, I will stop using the thin ones. Now, because I do have a thin one, and I do have, um, <laughs> so, you know, some more of these tubes over there, and this tire only has, you know, maybe a couple of thousand miles left on it, I am going to go back, I'm going to add some Gorilla Tape here, and I am going to go back with a, a thin tube to finish this one tire off. But when I start in with my new tires, I'm going to go in with heavy-duty new tubes. And hopefully we won't see this type of flat happen again. Okay, I set the camera up on the tripod here real quick. I'm going to try to blow this up. It leaks so fast that it it's you know, not going to blow the tube up. But you can definitely see where these leaks are. And the worst ones over here to the left, you can see it opening up. It's just that cut. It opened up in several places right here, like it was partially cut through, and then when it went, it just it just went. Another thing I want to point out is the, the ride-on that is in here, I would never expect it to seal this kind of puncture. It's really made for road puncture, something from the road, and I'll do a different review on that, uh, the ride-on stuff. I was really looking more for something that balanced and if it could help prevent punctures, that's great. My plan was, when I wore this tire out, was to drive a nail in it, pull it out, and see how it did with the tube. It says you got like a 50-50 shot with the ride-on, but I'm not disappointed in the ride-on in this case at all, because um, it would just, it's not up here, it's down here where you're most likely to get a puncture. This is a special situation. I was curious what ride-on looks like in the tube. First thing I'll note is when I cut this tube with this razor blade, it was effortless. It just sliced right open. Um, but uh, the real story here is if you've wondered what ride-on looks like inside the tire, it looks like partially curdled, dried baby spit up. There you go. Also going back with a layer of Gorilla Tape. This may be something I come to regret I don't know but uh, we're gonna find out um, I'm a little concerned about the tire bead getting here getting stuck and it making it really hard to get the tire off or we'll, we'll find out though hey that's what it's all about but I am gonna put a layer of that on to help protect the tube since I am going back with one of the thin tubes for right now so I got my wheel mounted on my no more tire changing stand uh, I love this thing I found it's actually an older model. I found it used not too far away. A uh, guy said it was in his way, so <laughs> I paid a lot less than what you would want to know. And I adapted the base. I made a new base plate for it so I could just bolt it in where my max jacks goes. If you hadn't noticed these before, uh, these are low lift, dual post lift. They're portable. The other one's sitting right over there. Uh, that's the pump for it. It's great for lifting lawnmowers. Uh, even the car, you know, we can lift the little Ranger up, get underneath it. The cars, we can get under them and service them. Of course, I have low ceilings here, so that's why I went with the shorty. But I just adapted that to it, and yeah, it works great. Well, I mounted the tire up. Uh, so far as mounting it, the extra tape didn't seem to impact how difficult it was at all. I have it up here. I have it balanced. There's one thing. Now, this tire was run with ride-on in it. <coughs> Thank you, Benny. And there is one thing I will have to say is the tire wear is incredibly even. Now, even tire wear tells me that it was very imbalanced when it was running it was balanced really well that center groove is about the same all the way around and I, you know i mean physics is physics and yeah adding something like that to it will balance it so that may be something that i do again but right now i think this is going to be my spare and i've got the new pusher on there i'm going to clean it up and going forward as I do tires I'm going to be switching to heavy duty tubes.
it'd be nice if, if he would turn his lights on for a second. Thank you. Got it. 